it is uh, one of the largest family belongs to the division phanerogamia class monocotyledony series glumesi and family gramini gentleman hooker has mentioned gramini family today we know it as a poaci in this family we find that these are mostly herbaceous members stems are joint and jointed they are fistular hollow inside they are cylindrical leaves are normally simple they are alternate and sheathing at the leaf bases this sheathing base is normally open uh, they are mostly having the hairy structures at the sheathing base where we can say these may be ligulate inflorescence uh, compound spike flowers are zygomorphic and hypogynous in nature protected by the pellia here you can little bit different terminology is being used for the poesy so protected by the pellia perianth represented by two or three minute scale like structures known as the lodicules stamens are three and they are versatile carpel is normally one and styles uh, may be two or three and stigmas uh, most in most of the members they are feathery placentation in this family we observed it has a basal type of the placentation and fruit is typically known as the caryopsis because the testas are fused with the pericarp in all the genera so these are the generalized character of the family poaci see uh, these are the feathery inflorescences in most of the grasses here you can find one of the member is that even in saccharum also you can find such type of the inflorescences most of the common plants in this family the wheat triticum astivum is there normally we call it as a gehu so here you can find these are the ones of this triticum and the grains of the triticum then oryza sativa we normally know it as a rice or chawal here you can find shoots of shoots and inflorescences of the rice and the varieties of rice we have mentioned here these are uh, particularly agricultured in most of the regions of the india the another member is the zea maize maize uh, we commonly know it as a is maca so various type of the grain coloration can be observed uh, in the maca but in normally we favors the yellow color type of the grains then hordum vulgar we normally call it as jaw or jaw hordum vulgar see the ons these are typically a pendulous ons can be observed here and here these are the grains of this jaw it is also agricultured for their grains then sorghum vulgar avena sativa these are also found in our region sorghum vulgar which commonly known as the jowar see the grains of the jowar and another one is the avena Uh, oat is normally known as so these are the seeds of the oat these are the grasses which can be found in our region cynodon dactylon wild grass we know uh, durva apan tela mhanto uh, we offer them to the ganesha so it is the cynodon dactylon then the symbopogon martini which is uh, normally planted at our kitchen gardens it is uh, known as the green tea leaves for its aroma as dal apan gauti chaha mhanto so it is a symbopogon martini and the saccharum officinarum in our region it is mostly planted for its sugar output so it is a sugar yielding plant which is common in our region these are mostly the herbaceous members annuals or maybe perennials or in some members we find the shrubby members are there Uh, and sometimes tree like uh, take the example of bambusa and dendrocalamus these are the genera of bambus where you can find a large grasses which are sturdier and uh, having habit like the tree the family is commonly known as the grass family and it is one of the largest family among the angiosperm families it consists about uh, 620 genera where 6000 species can be known for us the members are cosmopolitan in distribution all over the world you can find the members of this family the plant represented by the three ecological types heterophyte xerophytes and the mesophytes in india it is represented by around 850 species so
तो दिस इज वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट फैमिली ऑल ओवर दर्ल्ड the morphological characteristic of the plant the roots are as this is the member of monocotyledon adventitious and fibrous roots can be observed in this family in some members like gemmes we find a uh, fascicled roots or the stilt roots as in gemmes stem is mostly underground rhizomatous stem in all the perennial grasses cylindrical culms with the conspicuous nodes and internodes here you can observe that Uh, this is the internodal region whereas these joints are known as the nodes so nodes and internodes can be observed in this family this portion the internodal region is mostly hollow fistular and the nodes are solid they are glabrous or glaucous vegetative shoots are arising from the base of the here you can find leaves are typical alternate simple or diastichous type of the leaves are there they are normally extripulate sessile they doesn't have the petiole like structure but a leaf base is forming a tubular sheath so it is called the sheathing leaf base this is all actually the sheathing leaf base and here you can find that stilt is open surrounding internode incompletely ligule may be present at the junction of the lamina and the sheath here you can observe that this portion is the joining portion uh, and this is the normal uh, branch is there so here you can find the ligule is present these are the ligule portion these are the ligules where it can be present at the junction of the lamina and the sheath these are the hairy ligules uh, entire hairy or rough linear parallel venation can be observed here you can observe the parallel venation clear cut these are the ligules hairy ligules or the papery ligules can be observed so this is the sheathing uh, nodal region which can be covered completely by the sheathing leaf base this is the long sheathing leaf base of the leaf is there and leaves are mostly surrounded with the hairy structures so parallel venation can be observed in the almost all the grasses inflorescences are typical in this family you can find a regular type of the racemosimos inflorescences are not there but it can be called as a spike now these are the compound spikes uh, which may be sessile or stalked and each unit of the inflorescence is known as the spikelet so these spikelets are arranged in the various way on the main axis called the rachilla so instead of the inflorescence axis we call it as a rachilla now a compound inflorescence may be spikes or the spikelets uh, are observed in the triticum and panicle of the spikelets can be observed in the avena so a uh, simple spikelet or the panicle of the spikelet can be observed in the members at the base of the rachilla we find two sterile scale like leaves called the glooms The, these glooms are nothing but the placed one above the other on the opposite sides so lower one called the first gloom and the upper one called the second gloom so instead of calling it as a calyx epicalyx so the terms has been changed in this family so we are calling it as a first gloom and the second gloom both the glooms are normally boat shaped and they are sterile so they are performing the function of the calyx and above the glooms a series of florets are present each floret has the inferior pallia or lemma or it and it can be above the superior pallia these lemma are frequently bears a long stiff hair called the on so this stiff hair apan gava ombi madhe these are the stiff hairs called the ons now here you can observe that this is a complete inflorescence this is called the lower gloom and this can be the upper gloom these are all the spikelets which are arranged in the racemos type of the fashion here at the center you can find the ovary and this can be the bifid or trifid stigma is there here you can find the lemmas and the pallias instead of we call the calyx it can be called now the lemma and pallias 
So lemma and pallia may be present here. And inside that, we find the superior ovary is there and it is surrounded by the androsiums. Androsiums are normally three in this flower. So this complete structure is known as the rachilla and this is called the rachis. Here also the same diagram is there, but you, here you can find the structure which is drawn lower gloom, upper gloom. This is called the rachilla where we can find the spikelets can be arranged. The pallia and the lemma. Lemma is the lower one and upper one. Uh, we can find the pallia structure. So these are the blooms which are present on the spikelets. The flowers are mostly bracteate, bracteolate, sessile. They are normally incomplete, incomplete in the sense uh, androsium and gynosium. Either uh, one of them is present. Sometimes hermaphrodite, both the structures, androsium and gynosium present in the same flower, or it may be unisexual, as in GMS. Then irregular, zygomorphic, or hypogynous and cyclic structures may be present. Hypogynous in the condition, the ovary is the superior here. Zygomorphic because the lodicules and pallia may be present there, lodicules. Lemma, these structures are not in even size and shape, and because of that, we can say they are the zygomorphic in nature. Then perianth, perianth is represented by the membranous scales called the lodicules. Here you can find these two are the lodicules, and below that there is the pallia. So these are the structures where we can say the superior pallia or maybe the absent or in many uh, just take the Auckland where you can find two or three perians may be present. So normally two lodicules are present there and these are thin papery structures. These are the flowers which are having the pedicillate structure and the outermost whorl here is the lemma. So these are the sterile lemmas are present and inside that we can find the lodicules are there. So this is the single flower in that where we can find this is the gynesium. Gynesium is having the bifid feathery stigma and these are the androsiums. The androsiums may vary in the number. Normally they are three in structure. Androsiums are normally uh, three in number. Rarely we find uh, six, particularly in the oriza and the bambusa where you can find the six stamens are there and one in various species of the, it is the androstis, where you can find only one stamen is there. Here in uh, a lepturus, polyandrous, where the uh, polyandrous condition is there, filaments are mostly free, and because of that it is the polyandrous. Filaments are long, anthers are mostly dithicus, two-celled anthers are uh, there, and because of it is the dithicus in condition, they are versatile because the filaments are normally attached in the center and because of that, they can be easily blown with the wind and just uh, having the versatile nature of the anther cells. They are linear and extrose type of the dehiscence can be observed uh, in this family. The pollen grains normally dry and doesn't bear any type of the sticky substance. Uh, gynesium is mostly monocarpillary and according to some authors, we can carpels are three out of which two are abortive. And because of that, only one remains one. And in the monocarpillary gynesium. Ohri is mostly superior. Here you can observe that ohri is superior, unilocular with the single ovule and the basal placentation. Here you can find the basal placentation in the LS of flower you can easily observe. Stigmas are normally two and they are feathery or sometimes papillate and it may be the branch structure. Here you can find a large pallia is have been shown here. In the LSO flower, this is, these two are the lodicules. Here it is the gynesium. It is monocarpillary having bifid stigma and which is the feathery one. So these are the feathery stigmas are present. These are the three androsiums. They are attached at the dorsal side of the anther cells and they are freely blown with the wind. 
so they are having the versatile nature so this here we can uh, observe that the pelia lemmas are removed to see the all the structures the lemmas have been removed here having the long filaments to the anthers so this is about the gynecium where you can find it is the monocarpellary gynecium having the bifid type of the stigma fruit is the typical type of the fruit in this family it is known as the caryopsis or we can say the akin in the pericarp were completely united and it is adherent to the seed coat or normally a nut like structure as we observed in the dendrocalamus sometimes uh, in rarely we find it is a berry in the bambusa genus we can find the berry type of the fruit but the normal condition of the seed is the caryopsis type of the seed is being observed here also you can find the actual photograph where you can find the feathery stigmas have been shown and these are the anthers six anther cells can be found in the avena then seeds are endospermic and containing a single cotyledon called the scutellum so it is uh, and in the in this family we find the only one cotyledon is there because uh, this uh, poaceae family falls under the monocotyledonous group where it is called the scutellum uh, which is a uh, shield shaped and pressed against the endosperm so this is the special type of the seed has been developed here because of the sing only one cotyledon can be present here the pollination is mostly entomophilous uh, rarely uh, cell pollination can be observed when we talk about the floral formula because of the lodicules lemma pelia we find the flower becomes the zygomorphic in nature in most of the cases we find it is the bisexual flower only uh, in in one member that is maca where we uh, in corn we can find the unisexual flowers otherwise it is the bisexual flowers if a perianth normally two these are known as the lodicules now androsiums are usually three they are free so polyandrous condition can be observed gynecium is only one and it is superior in position here in floral diagram also you can find these structures so these are the lemmas and two lodicules are present these two are the lodicules this one is the lemma and here you can find the three androsial conditions can be observed and at the center you can find the monocarpellary gynecium is there these stars indicate the staminodal positions so here you can observe the floral diagram here you can find the typical diagram where you can observe the inflorescences these are the inflorescences here the length of the inflorescence axis spikelets has been shown here the length and the typical botanical diagrams has been drawn here here it is a bisexual flower where you can find this is the ovary these are the bifid stigma and three androsiums are present in this genera here we have shown the outer gloom the inner gloom then lodicules and pelias have been shown and the variations is noted here uh, triticum astivum here you can find the ons we just discussed here you can find these are the glooms which shows the presence of on like stiff hairy structures so these stiff hairy structures are nothing but the ons here these are the outer these are the glooms where having the one or two on like structures has stiff hair like structures so it can be noted here here you can find these are the androsiums anthers are mostly bithicus they are stored in the dehiscence and having the long filaments the ovary is typically at the center and superior position having the bifid type of the stigma is there here you can find the bifid and feathery stigma is there and these are the long androsiums having the anther cell basi fixed filaments are there connective is fixed at the base of the anthers so versatile anthers cannot be seen here but in most of the members other members you can find the versatile anthers here floret has been shown where two ons are present here and here is the typical flower where two lodicules have been shown and here you can find the gynecial structure monocarpellary gynecium 
with uh, bifid stigma, feathery stigma has been shown. Here it is the sheathing lip base and this is the structure where it can be open. So it is the ligule is present at the joining position of the anther lobes. So it is typically present in the family OAC. Most of the grains we use, they, these are belongs to family, this POAC. And these are some of the examples have been shown here. The triticum astivum, it is known as the wheat, which is commonly observed in, uh, or planted in our region. Oriza sativa, rice, zimes, jalapan maka manto, hordum vulgar, jaw, sorghum vulgar, uh, jawari. Uh, then avena sativa, bar oats, and the penicetum typhoides, it is known as the bajra. So these are the plants from this family which can be used for its grains and planted for its grains. Then another one is the fodder because most of the grasses have been uh, planted for the purpose of fodder for the animals. Uh, many grasses such as cyanodon, dactylon, panicum, symbopogon, agrostis, poya, these are grown for the fodder purpose and this can be used as a fodder for the animals, pet animals. Uh, for yielding the sugar, Saccharum officinarum is the commonly grown in our region. Sugar cane plant, we can say it as a, and it can be cultivated for its sugar or the good. So sugar yielding plant, that is the Saccharum officinarum. So most of the species of the bamboo are used for the building material, mats, or the partition walls, or various the scaffolding thatching huts bamboo which is considered as the hardest material for the construction purpose in furniture it can be also used dendrocalamus uh, genera is a large genera and it can be used for the purpose of making the furnitures uh, another genera like the arundinera then melocalamus are also used in the manufacturing of the furnitures as we know, uh, most of the members of this family are the grasses and many grasses aids the scented oil, which can be used in the perfumery industry. Uh, take the examples of vetivera jejanoides, where khus is the typical smell, which is marketed for the scent purpose, aids the vetiver oil from the roots. Then andropogon odoratus, ginger grass. So this grass is also used for the purpose of this typical smell. Then Symbopogon citratus, lemongrass, we commonly call it as a uh, lemongrass and this can be Symbopogon martini, uh, where gir geranium glass. So this also yields and the essential oils and which can be used for the purpose of in the perfumery industry. Uh, for the medicinal purpose, we can use the, it is the Phragmatis carca, Symbopogon uh, shulanthus. These are considered as the medicinal plants. Then sickle cereal is cultivated for its infection to the inflorescences by the clavicex, uh, claviceps purpurea for production of ergot and uh, for the extraction of the ergotonin. Ergotonin is uh, considered as the excellent remedy for the uterine contractions. So uh, this is the sickle cereal which can be utilized for this purpose. Then uh, paper industry, uh, normally the papers are considered, uh, papers are, uh, papers can be manufactured from certain species of the grasses of the bamboos. For the good quality paper, the bamboo fibers can be used. Because of the beautiful stems, many species of this bamboo can be used for the purpose of ornamentation. Uh, take the example of it is the Rinkelitrum repens, then uh, Cortadaria silo, uh, siloena, and some species and tribes of the Bambusidae are used for the ornamentation in the gardens. Besides of these, a uh, number of grasses are grown for uh, to form a fine lawns or the playgrounds. When we talk about the affinity of this family, the family Poesi gramini closely resembles with the family Cyperaceae and two families have been placed in same order, that is um, same order by the Engler and Prantel in the Gloomy Flory and the Gloomacy by the Bentham and Hooker. 
whereas Hutchinson, then Budjin and Taktajan placed the families into two separate orders, that is Cyparels and the Graminels. Whereas Cronquist in 1968 considered uh, that the families are also related on the account of some of the chemical data. Hugnar in 1963 has also supported the same view of the Cronquist. Hutchinson in 1959 believes that origin of the grasses, the family poesy, gramini uh, poesy, uh, took place in the parallel line with the cyperacy. When we talk about the primitive characteristics in this family, in the, in the family, a few plants are arboreal habit, just take the of uh, bambusoidi, where you can find the arboreal habit is there. All the florets in the spikelets are fertile. This can be the primitive character. Glooms are persistent. Lemmas are herbaceous and leafy. Stigmas are three. And leaves are simple and alternate. Flowers mostly hypogynous and hermaphrodite, bisexual flowers. These all, uh, even the seeds are endospermic. All these characters are considered as the primitive characters. When in the same family, a few characters are advanced characters, just take the, most of the members are herbaceous, annuals and perennials. So uh, this is considered as an advanced character for that. Leaves are extipulate. Flowers are arranged in the distinct inflorescences. Then flowers are small, inconspicuous and zygomorphic. Perianth are represented by the lodicules and stamens are reduced to three. So these are the some of the characters are considered to be the advanced character. Even the gynecium is monocarpillary and it is unilocular. Placentation is basal and fruit is the typical type of this particular family is caryopsis and seeds are very small sized. So these all characters are considered as the advanced characters and uh, this family can be considered as an advanced family among the angiosperms.